I was watching Varg at the Neff, I was thinking something. What if the Simpsons did a story arc? Yeah, you heard me. What if the Simpsons of all shows did a one season long story arc? How'd it go? I created one that I call Monopoly Springfield, which is pretty much where a financial mogul, who is our villain of the story, comes and plans to turn Springfield into his own marketing empire, kind of like what Fox does. But, so, how would this plot happen, and what would I do to do it? Well, there are a bit of instructions before you can even begin with this kind of a plot. I mean, it's a story arc, and The Simpsons hasn't really done that yet. Yeah, they've done romances over the season and stuff like that, but this one is drawn out over a whole season and through that season. Ready for what I say it will be? So, Monopoly Springfield. In the first episode, near the end, introduce your villain, okay? The public needs to know this is happening. Fox, this could get you the good ratings that you want because people might be invested in a little bit of story. However, this story arc I have planned does not once interfere with the comedy which is always strong in Simpsons, usually. <laughs> uh, I contradict myself sometimes. Um, but, so from here, the villain has entered our story. And, through maybe some event in Season 2, why doesn't the villain gain some contact contacts? I mean, you can either do that on-screen or off-screen, and just allude to it, you know? I think that could work well, because, well, with a few contacts, the Simpsons have plenty of enemies. It'll work. Next, what happens in episode 3 is the villain needs to get some way into the mob or another enemy. But I'm thinking the mob for this plotline. The mob has every backway control in the Simpsons there is. And you can or can you cannot show this part on screen. You need to allude to this. For example, maybe you can make the mob a little more appearing, maybe? And do a silhouetted figure around them? That would catch our fans' attention. I mean, it would certainly not lose viewers, probably, right? From here, you need to expand a bit. Four and five, I say nothing should happen to this story arc. I mean, The Simpsons still wants comedy episodes, and I'm not, and I'm not removing room for a treehouse of horror or something like that. If they want to do that, I mean, two co completely comedy episodes like that, I'm fine with that. Trust me, it works in good for the season structure. So, what happens in episode six? You need to bring the mob in big. This one. Now, don't get me wrong, like, the mob doesn't have to be big usually in these episodes, but this one is the one they need to be featured in, either making a deal, um, maybe do one of those, like, Mare to the Mob, or something like that for an episode. Just something that contains the mob in it, in a slight way. Not like the train wreck that, um, what to expect when Bart's expecting in season 25, which I may get to, I don't, I don't know if it's a train wreck, but... From here, episode 7, the villain needs to make a deal with the shopkeeper. For the shopkeeper. And this is a need for it to go on. You can, and this is another on-screen or off-screen. It doesn't matter, really. I'd be fine either way. I, probably with the general public, too, would be fine either way. But, so... There's no real opportunity for you not to include this part, this step. You see, the mob is, or the shopkeepers, as with most of the Simpsons characters, can easily be persuaded. The comic book guy's a complete jerk. Um, Mo could easily do it for money. Although he'd be a dangerous bet with what she did, because he does the Simpsons, and the Simpsons not. But then again, Homer would be drunk, so. Um, 
Yeah, and a poo, you just spoiled food. Um, next, episode 8 and 9 are two more, um, um, villainous episodes, I mean, or no, non-villain episodes, I meant. Um, like, basically what you can do in those episodes is two more comedy episodes. See, I've left plenty of space for that. I mean, the most of this mob stuff you can do off screen and do normal episodes. I don't care really about that. It's just, it's just it would be a little more interesting if you did it this way. So next, what happens is all the shops are under the villain control and mob cameos in all the shops. I mean, you have a scene at the Quickie Mart. Make sure Fat Tony or one of his gang members is in the background to that. That's how you can do it and allude to it. The modern casual eye wouldn't suspect it, but us theorists, uh, or those who see my video, would get it. Um, from here, the villain infiltrates the police with a bribe. The police is just like the shopkeepers, easily persuadable. William is extremely incompetent, and his police cops that he has aren't much better, because he's their leader. And it would basically kind of work, I think. Why don't... See, with the police corrupting out of the way, the mob activity, even the slight chance they had of catching it, off the table, too. The police are in on it, too, for the money. Because of the bribe. Because this guy's a financial mogul. Also, I could see them maybe making, like, Mr. Burns, like, gain, like, a bit of a memory or something like that. I mean, he's an evil old man already, but he's kind of stupid. Why don't you make him, like, regain memory of, like, a financial mogul who, was calling, who built up McDonald's or something like that? No, Krusty Burger at one point. That would be kind of funny. But you don't have to do that. Um, let's see. Once again, 12 is a nothing episode. 13? Aside from it. Aside from this, it needs to be a police episode for this plot to progress. Wanna know why? I want you to, I want people to see a pattern. Let's see. It's two episodes after. Three, two episodes and then that kind of stuff. That's kinda of okay. So, where do we go from here? So after the police episode, fourteen is another fresh episode, and the villain makes a plot and deal. This is where the story starts to come into a concrete structure. For example, these other plot parts are more fluid. You have to make a plot and deal. For example, so maybe um, one of the characters comes with a, with a solution, at, and at the end, it is revealed that they had the item or money for the solution from the villain. It gives them the trust, and puts the villain in even more of a position of power. I mean, we can't just have sideshow bobs for villains, or the rich Texan, or any of those guys. No, I think we need a season-long villain for one season. And remember, all of my ideas are just a brainstorm, pretty much. After the villain makes a plot and deal, the government falls from a bribe. Now... Once again, as I've said so many times, The Simpsons it does not have many good authority figures in it. For example, poli bad police, shopkeepers, and yeah, it's kind of understandable with how stupid most of the people in this town are. One of the few people, as I've read, it, get, who can stand in an outside situation is like Chalmers. So that tells you something. So once the government goes out of their villain control, two more episodes break. And now, listen, this is where it gets into con concrete. Truly. In episode 19 of this plan, no shops can be visited. You can't go to the comic book store, you can't go to the quickie mart, you can't even go to Moe's Tavern. Maybe just do a kid-centric episode at the school. The school's one of the few things I'm not working into this, because Chalmers. I don't think he'd be as easily persuaded as some of the others. Once again, episode 20, nothing. 
I've said it so many times. I want them to have plenty of comedic episodes like they planned. Plenty. But in episode 21, the villain reveals himself to Springfield. Yep, that's right. He's revealing himself at the end of episode 21. That'll leave you, Fox, on a good hook and set for a decent season finale, unlike last season. For example, so say after the events, he can make another plot ending meal if you guys want. I mean, um, but after that, what he does basically is he reveals himself through like the air and calls like a town meeting. Either maybe locks them in there or something like that, or reveal unveils all of his things to be true that way. Season. The episode 22 is probably the most important episode to get right. First of all, the first thing that has to happen for this plot to work is the Simpsons have to fight the villain in the end, like, either in a war, or, and you can include members of Springfield who weren't persuaded. Maybe, like, the kids revolt through Bar or something like that. And you can bring back one-off previous characters. It would be good to get some continuity references. Also, by the way, for this episode at least, no celebrities whatsoever. I don't even care. We want to see a Springfield Battle Royale, pretty much, against a villain who has people from Springfield all over under his control. Now, at the end of this battle, the villain could either escape, be killed, or be arrested. I'm leaving that up to you again, Fox. And then, if he escapes or is arrested and not killed, make him a reoccurring villain. Yeah, we have our handful of villains. Why don't we add another fist? The Simpsons is lacking character variety. I get it that Springfield's built up so much, yet the majority of the newcomers who move in to Springfield are either a celebrity cameo, um, or a second option, one-off character completely, and probably a celebrity cameo there. I mean, why don't we add more cast to this show? I get that we have a lot, yet here's the thing. You don't do enough with the background characters as you is, as you have them. So, without further ado, that was my thoughts on how The Simpsons can do a story arc, season-wide. And honestly, I think it's pretty good. Please, please subscribe to me if you like this video. I have more Simpsons season-wide plots and stuff like that coming on the way. If this goes successfully, at least. And the other thing... I'm sorry I didn't get to the last night's episode. So, yeah. Well, have a great night, subscribe if you want, and please comment. Thank you, bye.